Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll see magnetomotive force and reluctance. It will form a basic introduction to magnetic circuits and because we'll be discussing a lot of concepts under magnetomotive force and reluctance, we'll be breaking it down into chapters so that you can easily select any part of this video you want to watch. That said, let's get into class. Now, the first thing I really want us to do is to compare the magnetic circuit itself with the normal electric circuit. Now, just like the normal electric circuit will have an MF or like a voltage source, in our magnetic circuit, we have a magnetomotive force that and we we'll normally target as MMF or you can write it as an F with a short M. Remember, in for electric circuit, it's an equivalent to our EMF or the voltage source or in the electric circuit. Now, in the electric circuit, we always have a free flow of current in the electric circuit, such that current flows in here from the EMF and straight into the load or like here we have a resistance, but this is the form of, of the load. Now for the magnetic circuit, we have a magnetic flux, which is equivalent to a current in the electric circuit. And lastly, we would want to compare our resistance built in in an electric circuit with the reluctance in the magnetic circuit. For the resistance in electric circuit, we normally denote it as as R, but in magnetic circuit, our reluctance, the reluctance is usually denoted as, as S. Now, I did not mention how to denote current and magnetic flux. Now, for current in electric circuit, we denote it as, as I, while for magnetic flux in magnetic circuit, we denote it as, as phi. Now, with this, we can begin to talk about our magnetomotive force. Now the, the, the magnetomotive force is the cause of the existence of any magnetic flow in a magnetic circuit. Just like the EMF is a cause of current in your electric circuit, the magnetomotive force is a cause of the magnetic flux in your magnetic circuit. Remember I said that it's denoted, we can denote it as Fm. Now this magnetic flux is proportional to both the number of turns and also the current. So that we can now say that my magnetic flux is equals to is equals to N I, where N is the number of turns, where N is my number of turns, I is my current. And my F, Fm, is my magnetomotive force. It's my M, M, F, as a magnetomotive force. Now, as, as magnetic flux begins to flow in any circuit, magnetic field is developed around that magnetic material. Magnetic field has a magnetic field strength, as a strength, which we refer to as our magnetic field strength. Now, the magnetic field strength, as a magnetic field strength, we denote it as, as H, and the magnetic field strength is basically the ratio of my magnetomotive force, Fm, to length. And that is, if Fm, we say Fm is equals to Ni, we can say that my magnetic field strength is equals to Ni over L. That is, we said that our H, which is magnetic field strength, is equals to Ni over L. Now, in magnetic circuits, in many cases, there are air gaps. Now, these air gaps... has what we call the permeability. Now, this, the permeability 
of a free space, the permeability of that free space, the permeability of that free space is usually a constant, and it is the ratio of the magnetic flux density to magnetic field strength. So that I can say that the permeability, which is usually denoted as right as far zero, is the ratio of magnetic flux density to magnetic field strength. So that my permeability is equals to this is the permeability of free space is equals to B over H. But when the material becomes a non-magnetic material, we begin to talk about its absolute permeability. Now, for a non-magnetic material, the absolute permeability, which I write as mu, will be the same thing as the permeability of free space times U R. That is the relative permeability of that material. Now, and this also is equals to B over H. Now, note the difference. I talk of U naught, that is the permeability of free space, when it has to do with A. But when it has to do with a non-magnetic material, we begin to talk of the absolute permeability of that material, which will be equals to the magnetic flux, magnetic flux density over the magnetic field strength or the magnetic force. Now this this and this at the same time is equal to the product of the permeability of free space times the relative permeability of that material. Let's take a, a work example. My first work example says an iron ring of mean diameter 10 cm is uniformly wound with 2000 tons of wire. When a current of 0.25 amps is passed through the coil, a flux density, now let's begin to pick up parameters, a flux density of 0.40 is set up in the ion. Now let's remember that this is my flux density of 0.40, it has a mean diameter, that is diameter D is equals to 10 centimeter. Now let's convert this to to meters that will be 0. Point, that will be 0. 0.1 because that um that's 0. 0.1 one meter now the flux density b is the same thing as 0. 0.4 tesla and that's a current i of 0. 0.25 Amps, and it has number of tons n to be the same thing as 2000 tons. Now, with this, we can begin to lay our hands on the calculation. We are asked to find the magnetizing force. Well, the first thing I want you to note is the magnetizing force H, which is also the same thing as the magnetic field strength, is the same thing as our magnetomotive force. That's our Fm magnetomotive force over L. So that and our magnetomotive force is given as Ni, so that this becomes Ni over L. So I can equally say that this is my N is 2000 tons, that's 2000 times my I, which is 0 0.25 amperes over my L. Now for the L, the L will come from the circumference of this of this ion ring because we've been told it's an ion ring, then I know it should be a circle. The circumference is given as pi D. That's L D or you call it 2 pi R, which is the same thing. L D will come from pi times D. Our D is 0 0.1 meter times 0 0.1. Now, so that this will come from so that this will be equals to now from my calculator this will be equals to one thousand five hundred and ninety two 
amps, it becomes 592 amps per meter. Now, let me, let me talk about the unit for the magnetic field strength. Now, for the magnetic field strength, you observe that my H is equals to Ni over L. Now, obviously, N is the number of tons, which has no unit. My I is in amperes. That means that I have amperes over my length is in meters. So the unit will be in amperes per meter. Now, the last part of this question wants us to find the relative permeability of the ion. Remember, the relative permeability of the ion. We said that our relative permeability, our absolute permeability U is equals to U0 times UR and is also equals to B over H. It's H, sorry, not A, over H. So that this implies that my relative permeability UR will be equals to B over U0 H. Already we have H for this question. H is the same thing as 1,592 amps per meter. And we have our B to be 0 0.4 Tesla. So that will be 0 0.4 over the, the relative the permeability of free space is given as 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. Now times, this will be times 1, 5, 9, 2. Now so if you punch your calculator, you come up with 200. So the relative permeability, which is also a constant, is 200. With that, let's see. Let's round up with that. Let's round up this, this lesson with the concept of reluctance. Like I, like I did mention in the beginning of this lesson, the reluctance is the magnetic resistance of the magnetic circuit. So that in a magnetic circuit, just like we have our resistance R in electric circuit, R is an electric circuit, we'll have our reluctance S in a magnetic circuit. Now we have this as a reluctance in a magnetic circuit. Now the reluctance S for a magnetic circuit is given as Fm, that's a magnetomotive force, over the flux. And we know that Fm is the same thing as Ni. So I can equate this to Ni over the magnetic flux. Now also, if you remember in our previous lesson, we agreed that my B is equals to my magnetic flux density is the same thing as flux, your magnetic flux over area. So that this implies that this will imply that my magnetic flux will be the same thing as B A. That is my magnetic flux density times the area. So that now I can let's call this equation one. Let's call this equation one. I can now substitute in the equation one to say that my S now will be equals to Ni over B A. It's just follow me gently. If S is equals to Ni over B A, let's remember we mentioned that our magnetic field strength H is the same thing as is the same thing as Ni over L. So that this implies that Ni itself is the same thing as H over L. So that S now will not be equals to S now will not be equals to H L over B. B A. Now with this, I'll like to call this my second equation. Let's call this equation equation two. Now please just follow it gradually. It might look a little bit cumbersome, but it's very explanatory. Now if x is equal to H L over B A,
let's remember that for any x now is equal to hl over de let's remember that for non-magnetic materials we agreed that our relative permeability is equal to m we agree that our absolute permeability is equal to the permeability of free space times the relative permeability and this also is equal to b over h now just keep this i just wanted to remember remember this now we have agreed that s now is equal to in equation two we said that s is equal to h s is equal to h here in equation two we said that x is equal to h l over b a i want to split i want to split that so that s now will be equal to h this is over b write it this way times l over I've not changed the nature of the equation, but I just want you to relate it to this. Here you can see h over b, and here we can see b over h. So I can invert b over h to h over b, so that if if u not u r is equals to b over h h, this implies that this implies that b or this implies that h, sorry, h over b will be the same thing as 1 over u naught u r. So that s now is equals to l u naught u r times times a. Now this is the equation for the reluctance, the reluctance of a magnetic circuit. With this, I, I hope you can understand how to work with reluctance of a magnetic circuit. Also, in our next lesson, I'll take a work example to help us understand how to solve questions relating to reluctance of a magnetic circuit and the magnetomotive force of a magnetic circuit. That said, thank you and see you in our next class.